Hi, everybody. I want to talk to you about callings. You know, when you think of Christianity, you think of the Bible, you think about a person's calling. Um, a calling to be a missionary, a calling to be a prophet in the Old Testament. Uh, Jesus called people to be apostles. Others are called to be teachers. Calling in the Bible, the destiny that God has planned for us, uh, has two parts to it. There's general callings that apply to all of us as Christians, and then there's specific callings. Your individual, my individual gifting that God gives us so that we can fulfill this specific calling. Uh, the, the plan that he had just for my life, different than yours. But there's a first calling for all of us that is so vital to understand. I want to read to you here from the book of Mark where in Mark 3, Jesus says, uh, well, the Bible says, he went up onto a mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. And he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. These are the 12 he appointed, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, and so on, names them all, and it goes down even to the last one being Judas who betrayed Jesus Christ in the end. So the picture is Jesus is up on a mountainside and he looks down into some valley and we don't know, hundreds, many dozens, we don't know how many followers there were. We know at another time he sent out 70 people to uh, proclaim his message. But at this moment in Mark chapter 3, he chooses 12 by name. And they are going to be the 12 disciples and later the 12 apostles. Who when he leaves, they're going to carry on his work. But I want you to notice the first calling that was on them, that's on me as a pastor, but on you no matter who you are if you're a Christian, follower of Christ. The Bible says here that he called them that they might be with him. Then he would send them out to preach. Then they would have authority over evil spirits and all the powers of darkness. But their first calling was to be with him, to have fellowship, to have communion. What did that mean back then? It meant they followed him, and when he stopped to eat, they stopped to eat. When he went to Capernaum, guess what? They went to Capernaum. Uh, they sat and had meals with him. When they had questions, they brought it to him and listened. When he wanted to teach, they listened. When they had problems, they brought and talked to him. They were with him. That word is meaning communion, fellowship, mutual sharing, now, everyone knows that Christianity, or I hope everyone knows, that Christianity is not about going to a church, not being a Catholic or a Protestant. Those words have no meaning to God. It's a relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. We have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's how we're born again, and we come into the kingdom of God, become part of the family of God. But this is not what this passage says. He was not calling them into relationship. He was calling them to be with him. You know the difference. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9, God is faithful who has called us into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. Fellowship. Now, Paul was writing to a church. They had relationship. They were believers. He said, no, God is faithful though who has called us into fellowship, there's a deeper calling than just, all right, now I'm a Christian. And it's so powerful. It's so meaningful. We miss so much when we don't um, understand it and practice it. Let me give you another example. First John, uh, in the first chapter, I'm going to paraphrase. John says, listen, what we saw, what we heard, Jesus, when we were with him, we're telling you about him so that you might have fellowship with us, same word, 
and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Fellowship. Not relationship only. Fellowship. Now, I do a lot of counseling over the years, and you're aware of this too, right? You can easily have relationship with no fellowship. Oh, yeah. Abused children, abused daughters, sexually abused, physically abused, grow up many times, and then when they can get out of the house, they're gone, and years and years can go by. Maybe their whole life, they have no fellowship with their father because of the sordid history in their lives. Do they have a relationship? Yeah. Go to the hospital. There's a certificate. That's the biological father. That's the daughter. They have a relationship. Fellowship? No. No. That can happen uh, even in a family. I had relatives once who didn't talk to each other for two years because they didn't like where they were seated at a wedding reception. I mean, don't ask. What breaks fellowship in families is amazing. Or even in a marriage, you can point to the marriage certificate. I'm married, Bob is married to Mary. Do Bob and Mary talk? Do they share life? No, no, that stopped a long time ago. It's just like a business arrangement. No fellowship, no sharing, no concern, no helping. It's just, it can be brutal. Now, God has called us not to have just relationship, but to have fellowship with him. What does that mean? That means every day the Lord is saying to us, can you believe this? Me, little old me, sinful me, but Christian me, God is saying, I want to spend time with you today. Now, why would he want to have time with someone like me or possibly you? That's how much he loves us. When you love someone, you want to have fellowship with them. You don't have to be talking all the time. This is not just prayer. This is something involving worship, loving, adoring, listening. Yes, talking. That's part of fellowship. This is what I'm going through. This is what's hurting me today, Lord. This is what uh, is just so heavy on my heart. I have to talk to someone. A lot of times no one understands but the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have fellowship with him. We talk to him about it. And he lifts those burdens off of us when we have fellowship. You can't be rushed. Listening, worshiping, talking, sometimes listening from his word or listening for his voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit. So one time years ago, I was in the middle of a huge building project for the church to get into our present campus, involved in the end, dozens and dozens of millions of dollars. So we would have all these mini crises. You understand how those things work. It never costs what they say. It never takes as long as they say. So one day, I was about to go into the church to work. My wife was in Nashville doing a, 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 a project with her choir, a recording project. I was all alone in the house. And I was burnt out. You ever get burnt out and tired and empty, like zero? Empty, the tank is empty. I was empty. And then I get a call from someone in the office who was the liaison with the architect and the contractors. Pastor, uh, they, we just heard requisitions have come in. We're short. Uh, six, if we don't have $680,000 or something like that, big number. If we don't have it by next Tuesday, they're going to walk off the job. Last thing I needed to hear, here, honestly. Okay, I'll come in. I really needed to, to rest, but I'll come in. So the drive was about a half hour from where I lived then in Queens to the church. And as I'm getting ready to go in, I just feel a whisper in my heart, where are you going? I'm going to church, you know, like I work there, like I'm the pastor. Don't do it. Be with me. No, no, I, I felt maybe this is fanaticism, imagining it. No, no, be with me. I knew it was the Lord calling me to be with him. What an amazing thing. God wants to be with us. So I called in and said, I'm not coming. It is what it is. I, I need to do something else. So I went up to the attic of my home I lived in then. 
I got a big, large print Bible. I laid it out before me. I was so empty that I couldn't even re uh, pray. I couldn't pray. Didn't have the spiritual energy to pray. So I just put it on my lap, began to read. Time went on. It was about quarter to ten when I went down there. I read for a while. I started feeling some faith rising in my heart. Began to sing a little bit. I can't sing good, but when no one's there, it always sounds great. Talked to the Lord, listened. I was there from 10-ish to about 20 to 6 in the evening. You know, just a day with the Lord. You like to hang out with people? Try hanging out with the Lord. Tell me what it does. I'll tell you what it did for me. I was a new person. When I walked out of that quarter to six, I'd only been drinking some water during the day there. I went out. I was a new person. I had faith. The problems looked like little anthills, and I was ready to go. As I was getting done and to go out, I got a phone call from the offices, the truth before God, and they said, by the way, uh, during the day today, somebody called, someone felt a burden, and one way or the other, I can't remember the details, uh, that we got a total of $700,000 that were committed to us. There, It's coming in the next 24 hours. So not only was I a new person, but while I was just waiting and talking to God, he changed everything, not only in me, but even around me. Fellowship. Why don't you and I begin a new daily calling to be fulfilled? Today, God, you're going to give us grace and the discipline and the hunger to be with you. That cell phone is not your answer. Your friends are not your answer always. Jesus is our answer, and he wants us to spend time with him. God bless you.